Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Kardec Radio and the Spirit is Side of Virginia in one more Friday Inspirational Talks. This is our public meeting. And because of coronavirus pandemic, we can't be in the center. It looks like we'll have to stay for online only for quite a while, right? And uh, this is a reminder to everybody that those who are living in the U.S. need to use masks, need to avoid social gatherings, need more than ever to wash their hands as often as possible because the coronavirus is worse today than it was back in March. So we need to be very attentive and not only about the physical measures, but the spiritual ones. Praying more often and cleansing our hearts as much as possible. It, it is a test of resilience and endurance. There is much for us to learn and we can't avoid it. Right this week, many people are asking me, is this real? Is this real? Yes, I got to know of many people who are close to me, but not in Virginia, in other states, who were contaminated and are sick. So it is real and we need to pay attention. When I talk to people who go through this experience, we're not kidding. It is real. So please, let's be observant of the measures, okay? And let us begin this moment. I see beautiful friends here, Daniel, Saul, Souza, Narciso, and many others who are joining us. Yes, we miss everybody. I We can't wait for our celebration when we gather together in person. We're going to celebrate so much. It's going to be a hugging evening for sure. And the power of hugs because we won't need any masks any longer, hopefully. So right now, Carlos is going to begin by reading a message from the book, The Way, the Truth, and the Life by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. This is the chapter 108, Reincarnation. Therefore, if your hands or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life lame or crippled than to have two hands and two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. Jesus, Matthew 18, 8. Only reincarnation can clarify the questions of being, suffering, and destiny. On many occasions, Jesus spoke to us about its lovely and wise principles. The passage from Matthew is extremely significant. It is essential to remember that the Master was talking to a stagnant, almost dead society. Strictly speaking, among the divine lessons they receive, Christians actually know only about one kind of death, the kind that comes over the guilt, conscience for having broken the divine law. Most of Christ's contemporaries were people who had no edifying spiritual deeds. Their souls were hardened and their hearts cold. The expression, it is better for you to enter life, represents the fundamental solution. solution. Were not those who listened to Jesus being uh, human beings? However, the Lord was referring to continuous, continuous ex existence, the ongoing life during which the, every spirit awakens to its glorious destination of eternity. In the loft symbolism of uh, words, Jesus presents us with the underlying cause of pain-filled rebirths, in which we observe those crippled, blind, and paralyzed from birth 
who had asked for such trials as periods for the renewal and regeneration needed for their future happiness. As for the image of eternal fire, it is highly appropriate to the lesson because until people decide to live in Christ, they will be forced to do so by thousand different ways. If their rebelliousness persists through the centuries, purifying prog a process will remain in place like material fire with which will exist on earth for as long as, as it takes a, an indispensable resource for physical life. In this message, we find an invitation to renewal and to ask ourselves, have you, we been rebellious? What is to be rebellious? We already know the law is the law of love. Are we loving? Are we kind? Are we caring? Because if we're not, the purifying processes are just around the corner. Let us then pray together. Because today we have a very, very special study ahead of us. Dear God, what a message you brought to us, an invitation to realignment. Our pride and selfishness have been distancing us from you. We've been rebellious, thinking that our temporary position before ours, others, justify cruel means, indifferent approach, the coldness in relationships. And the much we have been exposed to this truth now with spiritism we have no doubt of the need to open our hearts to open our hearts in gratitude to you in humility humbling ourselves as we get to know that everyone we encounter is your children. So who are we to put them down or to be indifferent to them or even to be harsh? We apologize for those thoughtless moments and we want to adjust ourselves even before another reincarnation comes we still have time may tonight be a night of true liberation when incarnates and discarnates who are here join together in new awareness. May sunshine and Carol who lead us into the study of the night. Feel the inspiration of your love as we expand horizons, the horizons of our discernment and understanding gathering new tools for our purification. As you said, through Jesus, blessed are those who have ears to hear. And we visualize these blessings enveloping all of us in our homes, 
our neighbors and expand throughout the establishments where people are in greater need than ourselves. And we pray especially for the White House in the United States. For its healing and the healing of a nation. And we thank you for the opportunity of this wonderful spiritual nourish moment and so be it yes it is a joy because look who we have here we have daisy carol, carol. and sunshine is our guest yes she's a host at Cardiac radio but tonight she's a guest. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. It's wonderful to have you here. But before we talk about what you and Carol have been are going to bring to us, we want would like to ask our dear Daisy to present one special question from the Spirit's Book. Right? It's the Spirit's Book moment, right, Daisy? That's right, Vanessa. And I, the mentors tonight, um, as they always do, they, we, it wasn't, you know, by chance, but the question that we're going to reach and I'm going to go hand in hand, I believe, with the study that Sunshine and Carol will bring to us. So, to recap, we are studying the Spirit's book and we are in the third part chapter seven, the moral perfection, we're talking about the passions. And tonight we are on question 911. So Kardec asked the following question to the spirits. Are there passions that are so alive and irresistible that the will is powerless to overcome them? And the spirits answer, there are many who say, I want to, but their will is only on their lips. They want, but they're very satisfied and not being able to. When they believe they cannot overcome their passions, it is because their spirit is pleased by them as a result of its own inferiority. Those who try to restrain their passions understand their own spiritual nature and overcoming them is the triumph of the spirit over matter. So how many times, right, we hear and we ourselves say, oh, but I want to change. I know that I should choose better. I know that I can do better, but we go back and continue in the same mistakes, committing the same, going back to the same, these passions that um, we're studying in this chapter of the Spirit's book, those dark things that are inside of us. So how can we overcome them? So Kardec tonight is bringing the summary to us has a reminder that it goes beyond us that I want to or even studying. We know in spirit is the importance of studying, instructing ourselves and also is studying ourselves, right? That's the first thing we need to remember that when we study ourselves, our tendencies, especially those tendencies that we see that come from many, many lives and we see enrooted inside of us. How can we change them? Well, Jesus himself, he came and he taught us, right? Yes, it's important to know, but it's even more important that we feel 
That was Jesus' recommendation to Nicodemus written in the book Good News. So we feel, feel the teachings. And as Kardec summarized here for us, focusing not on the passing things of life, because our lips can say all that we want, but if deep inside of us, we don't feel it, we don't really want to change and do better. And how can we do it? If we focus not on the material, but the superior things, the things of the spirit, if we have that focus and remember that everything comes with effort and repetition. So the more we try, the more that we will close, we'll get there. So we can start today giving the first step. We we'll might fall, but we can stand up again and try the next day. But the important thing is that we keep on trying and we keep on studying ourselves so that we know, we feel, and then consequently it will turn to actions. That's our spirits book moment of tonight. Thank you, Daisy. What a beautiful question and answer. So empowering, right? And as you said, it's a beautiful introduction to the study tonight as Sunshine and Carol will lead us into, it's not a summary per se, though it's a summary of the book, <laughs> yeah. but it's main highlights because the Sunshine and Carol have already gone through the very thorough study of the book liberation on Saturdays. Now they are studying every Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time, the book Between Heaven and Earth by Andre Luis Truchico Xavier. But if you want to recap that study, the very thorough study of the book liberation, you can go through uh, our YouTube channel, Facebook page at Cardiac Radio or SoundCloud podcast list where you're gonna find the whole book you can listen to it, you can watch it, but today we have the blessing of having the summary. And we're going to begin with Sunshine, right, Sunshine? Yes. All right, you want to share your screen? Yes, I'm going to share my screen. Oh. Is that, hold on. Yes, oh, we got you. We're all your Sunshine. Yes, you can see it well. Yes. Before we begin, sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Before we begin, I want to just to share with people how we will move the slide. Just a second. You can just keep it there. For those, you know, because you're always here on Sundays and Besides Saturdays with Carol, on Sundays you come, and lately you have been doing the study on the book Genesis, The Miracles by Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and just for those who are not acquainted, you are in California, right? Yeah. In the Sacramento area. In the Sierra Nevada foothills, yes. Yes. And the Spirit Centers that you're affiliated, it's the Divine Light Spirit Center in Sacramento, California? It's the Divine Light in Nevada City, California. Nevada City, sorry. Nevada City. Central in Sacramento. Yes. yes. All right. So for those who want to know, there is a Spirit Movement there in Northern uh, California as well. Mm -hmm. And we are happy that you're here with us sharing especially this study that is so important nowadays regarding what's happening with the, the the spiritual atmosphere of the earth and in our individual lives right yes definitely literally so, right. <laughs> yes. um, so this book really describes um how the dark forces work and then, of course, the conquest of the light forces, namely love over the dark forces. So um, let's move on. Now let us do a little introduction first. So André Louise essentially describes to us the work of high order spirits 
in their effort to convert the spirit Gregorio uh, to the good. Now, Gregorio is the head of the dragons of justice. And this effort um, of rescuing him, so to speak, culminates in this unforgettable encounter with his mother, Matilda, who is a highly evolved spirit. And he ultimately surrenders to the irresistible call of love. And um, we further learn um, how high order spirits teamwork and that as they're rescuing one spirit in that wake, in this single mission, there's so many other spirits that are being rescued. So it's really truly divine work that is so far reaching, much more than we thought it would be originally. Um, Andre also brings alive the immense divine compassion that is continuously at work and which is rooted in study, labor, discipline, service in the good. So the first, the book begins with um, two meetings and in these meetings, um, Andre Luis really sets the stage for the rest of the book it's quite analytical in the sense that um, this is the meeting with Minister Flaccus, and he is educating this group of spirits, explaining um, in general how the dark forces work and how the conquest happens. And then later on also um, describes um, the actual steps that need to be taken. So here we're finding Minister Flaccus, and we're highlighting just a few points. Um, they seem a lot, but really if you read the book, which um, is highly recommended, you'll see this is not even the tip of an iceberg. So um, Flaccus helps us to see the overall um, struggle of um, conquering the darkness. And he uses a quote by Paul of Tarsus, which we can find in the Ephesians. And this is quote unquote, he says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So already we're getting the picture that's pretty vast. So it is, huge, the work of this conquest. Then he continues to help us understand the characteristics of the dark forces. And of course, this list is from the book. It's not conclusive, but it gives us some highlights. So he says, of course, one of the main ingredients is ignorance. I want to also say that whatever we are now talking about in the book, as Vanessa already earlier said, it's happening outside in our world for millennia. It's, this is nothing new, but also currently. And it happens in the book, but not only out here, it also very much happens inside of us. So the invitation for us tonight is to really reflect every word back into our own conscience, because that's where the work lies, right? So ignorance is one of the main ingredients, um, characteristics of the dark forces. Of course, pride and selfishness. Furthermore, idleness. Idleness of the mind and out of that comes idleness in our lives. Um, the eclipse of reason. So reason isn't always used any longer, which often happens due also to idleness and or mind control that um, dark forces exert over us and um, other spirits. Rebelliousness, we just talked about rebelliousness. It's the rebelliousness against God. It's the rebelliousness against love. It's the rebelliousness against God's laws. Further, we find destructive passions. Again, we've just learned about passions. So passions is a big item among dark forces. Then. Furthermore, there's intelligent regimentation. So we find very intelligent groups that um, are organized like communities. So it's not the random spirit here or there or in a morph group. No, these are very highly structured organizations. And further, we find complete denial of the existence of higher regions. 
And we find that here on earth too, right? In many of our brothers and sisters. And then another one is the characteristics of imposition of rules. So there's force that they mainly use to exert their will. So the goal, the overriding goal of the evil spirits that Flacus helps us to understand in this group of spirits that we see in this beautiful slide is the conservation of mental backwardness of the human being so that planet Earth will remain under their tyrannical yoke. So this is, this is really important, right? So this is also important for us to watch out for, right? those energies, because it's all energies. Um, furthermore, he says, as fallen angels of science, these dark forces seek the debasement of divine processes that guide the planetary evolution. So these are quotes from him, these are not my words. So it helps us understand how they operate and what their goals are. And then, of course, it helps us also on a personal level. And that's really the main goal too. I mean, first of all, we, we want to raise our awareness so we recognize it outside of us, but primarily again, inside of us. So what do we need to watch out for? And Flaccus helps us again. He says, um, suffering souls that commingle with us. Um, they have a very strong influence on our homes and administrations. So it's not just a one-on-one -on -one influence, it's also a group influence. So it is a whole group on planet Earth get influenced by groups of dark forces. Um, the interest of the most intelligent spirits is to keep the world distracted. I found that very fascinating and in the dark by encouraging ignorance and selfishness. So very often the distraction of the drum that drums the loudest is not always the one we ought to take, pay attention to. It might just simply be a distraction. And then since we're focused on one thing, of this one loud drum, we're missing a lot of other occurrences. So this is also really helping us. Then he says, spirits with somber and debasing radiations that are imperfect and indecisive, like ourselves, are sharing our homes. So again, to reflect it back on us, it's an item, it's a characteristic of indecisiveness. Are we committed? Are we committed to the good? Are we committed to the service? Are we committed to love? To balancing reason with love. But if we're indecisive and going in and out, we easily get swayed then by law of affinity, the same spirits we attract to our homes. Furthermore, controlling intelligences that are strength stronger than ours. So will, our willpower is very important. A will that's directed towards the good. Then he um, helps us to understand how these forces enter us. There's two main gates in our bodies. And one is the sex center and the other one is the abdominal region. This is how we, depending on how we organize, how we manage our sexual life and also our abdominal, our food intake, our nourishment, depending on that, we of course, law of affinity, attract lower order spirits easily if we don't pay attention. And of course, the two centers we really want to develop further are the heart center and the brain, the, the mind towards the good. And then he talks about fleeting pleasures and they're linked of course to these uh, two centers where the dark forces can enter us in our bodies. Um, then he continues on. He now says what essentially predisposes us to the evil forces, which is kind of linked to what to watch out for. They kind of, um, they dovetail on each other, they're linked. So there, there's no hard and fast line between them. So he's, he's helping us to understand that if we're holding on to old problems, emotions, and desires in our lives, if we nurture old um, unhealthy habits, and they may even stem from previous incarnations that we brought with us, we are opening ourselves up to ignorant spirits. Then he says, a mind 
this is quote, quote uh, quotation, a mind that is sedated by the dangerous narcotics of illusion is a mind that opens itself up again to darker forces. So it's the dangerous narcotics of illusion. Are we, and what illusion opens is us, us up if our mind is proud, if we are proud and rebellious. If we're intelligent, proud and rebellious. So rebellious primarily against God's law and the law of love, which is the same really, but just another term. Um, then furthermore, there's these illusions, this vain dominion, it's leading to struggle and war. Vain dominion helps us to struggle and wage a war. Again, it's not only out there, it's really here in us, in, in our families, in our friends of circle, uh, circle of friends. So it's always reflecting, right? We want to reflect it. Discord, hatred, criminal actions are truly helping us to attract um, dark spirits. Then he, then there is another quote, a divided and tormented spiritual kingdom surrounds the human experience. So we're surrounded by this divided and tormented spiritual kingdom. And with the purpose to enlarge their tyranny and power. Again, something to watch out for because on some level we see the manifestations right now in earth right in front of us, right? And so how can we help with the divide? How can we be a light force? How can we feel, how can we contribute as an integrative force, right? And not fall prey to it, to the illusion that division is the right path, is something we need. We were surrounded by the same energies, right? Then undermining, um, they like to undermine the divine harmony, of course. And then if we set ourselves up, we predispose ourselves to the darkness with our judgments. And we see it in Gregorio and the group of judges, this darker world he lives in, they're run by judgment. So our judgments, are our brothers and sisters, they're definitely opening us up. Furthermore, for selfishness and pride, and of course, always jealousy. Jealousy is one of those main um, attributes of lower forces. So then in his crowning moment, Minister Flacus asks the crowd and us three therapeutic questions. So these are now, quote unquote, coming directly from him. And I'd like to share them. Now we don't have time to meditate on them, but I'll speak slowly so that maybe we can retain some information or maybe quickly reflect back to us onto, into our own conscience and see where are we at. So here's question number one he's asking. Do you believe you are so enlightened that you can deny the dark side of your own personality? Question number two, have you rid yourself of all the temptations that flow from the inner recesses of your inner struggle. Because one thing we need to keep in mind is the temptations are not coming from the outside in. They're living inside of us, right? Because a piece of cake can be a temptation for one person, but not the other, because it's the reverse. The direction is the opposite. So have you rid of yourself of all the temptations? So this is very important. Don't you realize, question number three, don't you realize that the earth itself has circles of light and darkness as to the recesses of your own hearts? So in other words, he's saying, the light and darkness we see around us, they live in here in our hearts. And that's what we want to focus on because we want to put, let our light shine brighter so in other words, the darkness can come to light for us, to us. So we can actually deal with it and change ourselves, right? So let us move on. Of course, they're also being told what mission they're embarking on. Namely, now as a first step, they're going yet to another meeting. So here we're finding Instructor Gubbio, Andre, and Eloy, um, flying through the starry sky to a temple where they meet with instructor Gama. 
And here we are at this meeting. And they're finding 20 materialization mediums um, at this meeting that are providing radiant energy, moving melodies are being played, lofty meditations take place, and prayer. And during this um, mindful, beautiful moment, then Matilda, high order spirit, who in a previous incarnation used to voice uh, Gregorio's mother, but is being materialized. And the description is deeply touching in the book. So it's warmly recommended to read it. Um, so there she expresses um, her love for Gregorio. And she says, you may judge it as a love for a reprobate, but for me, he is my son. And she expresses her motherly love which never ceases. And she also admits, and this is really interesting for us, that she cannot ascend unless he gets rescued. So the path of ascension is not a solitary path. We take spirits with us. It is a, um, it is service, even in this regard. Then um, Gregorio, is being explained that Gregorio also has love ties to a lady by the name of Margarita, who features greatly in this book. However, these love ties have soured and um, Margarita used to be Gubio's, um, instructor Gubio's daughter in a previous uh, incarnation. So now as they learn from, Mar from Matilda that they are, in general, generally speaking, supposed to rescue Gregorio to help him and, of course, the motherly heart that is longing for him to be surrounded by love and reaching love himself in his conscience. André Luis, Gubbio, and, and Eloy are now embarking into the lower regions in order to meet Gregorio and then ultimately meet Margarita in their rescue, on their path to the rescue mission of, at the end, Gregorio. So here we're finding the team of three. They are um, descending into this lower um, realm. And in this lower realm, they're finding the sunlight is um, very hazy, has become very hazy. Um, there is Volition is impossible because it's a very heavy and dense and sinister um, area. The vegetation looks pretty dead. They hear piercing appeals coming from the mire, groans and screams, deranged spirits roaming around everywhere. And Andre is wondering and is asking a key question that we would like the answer to as well. Why does God allow such an atrocity? And Instructor Gubbio helps us to understand, and this is quote unquote, he says, for the same instructive reasons that God does not exterminate a human nation when insane with a thirst for domination, it unleashes cruel and destructive wars. Instead, God hands it over to the expiation of its crimes and to the misfortune it has brought upon itself so that it can learn to become part of the eternal order that presides over universal life. So in other words, the application of the law of cause and effect. And we know it in our own lives, and of course it happens also in group lives, or even in the lives of nations. And this is really at the core, why we find so much suffering on earth. So then they are reaching this um, scene here where they're for the first time are getting in touch with the judges. Um, they're taken to a strange looking place. Andre describes that's shaped like a hexagon and it has brownish spires illuminated by torches and the judges holding axes are flanked by servants and they enter courtrooms, the courtroom with drum rolls in the background. So it's a very um, dramatic scene. And Gregorio 
is the head judge and he is called the righteous judge and he continuously recites punishments. He essentially says those who vilify and hurt, just as an example, will receive the same. So this whole region is, in other words, ruled by the law of an eye for an eye. There is no mercy whatsoever. There is simply just judgment, harsh judgments and punishments. And as he speaks these words, there's tormented cries from the audience. We're also learning that they are using this group of spirits is using a mental wave receiver that's examining and judging the level of crimes in individuals and their ability to stick to the truth, to speak the truth, which is also very interesting. So they're using some technological means. So here is the encounter with Gregorio. After they have spent a whole night, this team has spent a horrible night behind bars. The bar is electrified, so they must not touch them. They find Gregorio in front of them. And he is the representative of and the leader of the Dragons of Justice. He appears to be super intelligent. Um, he explains that in his um, realm, so to speak, criminals watching over one another, eyes are, they are the eyes in the darkness. There's no mercy, there is no love, there's only cruel persecution in the name of justice. There's also no forgiveness, and again, only eye for an eye revenge, and revenge. And Instructor Gubbio starts a humble conversation, trying to convince Gregorio, and it takes pages in the book, to be able to meet Margarita, who used to be his love in a previous incarnation. However, he, Gregorio, harbors some deep hatred towards her vengeance because of what she had done to him as he perceived it in a previous incarnation. Consequently, he, he puts up a lot of resistance, but in his humility, Gubbio achieves to convince Gregorio to allow him Andre Luis and El Eloy to become part of the phalange that is carrying out the gradual execution of Margarita. And Gregorio at the end gives this group, this team, a secret password. Now let us keep in mind that Margarita used to be Gubbio's daughter in a previous incarnation. And Margarita is deeply, is persecuted tremendously by um, by Gregorio and his team. And here we're finding obsessed Margarita. She has two dreadful looking discarnates bent over her chest area, vampirizing her. She has just a few more days to live due to this obsession. We're also noticing six ovoids that are attached to her brain. Ovoids are spirits who have been so deeply immersed in their ignorance that they even, the peri spirit, even lost human form. So they are being informed that she only has a few more days to live due to this obsession. And as they are moving forward and observing, more so than doing anything, even though Andre says, why don't you do anything about it? How can you watch Margarita, who is your beloved daughter, being tortured so badly. But what we're learning is that the characteristics to liberate someone are humility, most and foremost, compassion, educating ignorant spirits and assisting, assisting them with mercy. So justice and mercy need to go hand in hand. Love, absolute love and respect, even for the lowest spirits, is required. Lots of patience, 
selflessness, self-sacrifice, self-abnegation, prayer to mobilize even more higher mental reserves, education and service, forgiveness, faith. And all of this takes time. So Gubbio is taking his time and is waiting for the right moment in order to do his work that he describes as inner transformational. He says the truly perfecting work of inner renewal goes from the center to the periphery. So just jumping all over these, these um, obsessors and yanking him or them away from Margarita would not do any good, he explains. He says it's a process that is controlled by the mind and what we're learning now is the path to liberation. This is part of how liberation, true liberation will look like. He says essentially that where our mind goes is where our life goes. The mind stands as the mirror of life. He says kind assistance that can alter the inner vibrational tone is of the essence. And he says that sacrificing ourselves is to overcome ourselves. And by modeling that rather than speaking and acting at this very moment, by, by taking them away from Margarita, it takes self-sacrifice. So he needs to observe and suffer in this observation. And this is part of his modeling all the qualities he's teaching Andre and Eloy about, self-abnegation, self-sacrifice. He says we need to pray for the persecutors, those who command the weak. And he says, the good is the door to our redemption. We need to do the good on this mission with all that come and cross our path. And he says, we need to abstain from manipulating the passions. We need, we need to go to the root of the heart for salvation. And then finally, in this quote, he says, vibrations of fraternal love, like those bequeathed to us by Christ, are energies that actually dissolve the vengeance, persecution, disorder, pride, and selfishness that torment the human experience. It is so beautiful, so much to learn. It is really, truly so beautiful. These are all the ingredients we need for our own liberation and in the assistance of the liberation of our brothers and sisters. Finally, they're taking Actually, her husband, Margarita's husband, Gabriel, is taking her to a church service. However, this church service, as we can see here from the picture, is not what we often envision a church service to be, where we're communing with higher, higher order spirits. We see they're present, but they're not really connected to the congregation and the priest. Instead, the congregation, and particularly the priest and the altar, are covered with lower order mocking spirits. It looks more like a circus of lower spirits than a divine occasion. And why is that? It is due to the priests and the congregations materialistically inclined thought forms. The priest essentially is praying while he's thinking about going home and being done with, with it, this service. And this is what happens when we are not truly focused on the good beautiful that we have these slides because then we can really see visually of how it looks behind the scene often. And then here is our final slide before we pass it over to Carol. Um, so the church service was not very successful in changing Margarita's affliction and obsession. The next step um, her husband is taking is he is decided to bring her to a famous professor of psychic sciences. And in this image, we see Margarita with her five ovoids attached. And to the left of her is her husband. And the gentleman sitting at the chair across from them is this psychic. And we see very clearly that his peri spirit, however, is linked to this short guy in the front on the left, who is not a high order spirit. So why is that? Well, the psychic, while he has very strong forces and he, he has definitely the capacity to do some good and to, to see and, and receive messages from the other side, 
from the spirit side, however, is a very materialistic person. He's money oriented and very expensive. And the first thing he does when they enter his room is asking for money. So of course, that is yet another opening to lower order spirits when we emphasize money. So his capacity of doing the good is eclipsed. He's lacking self-denial, he's lacking a prayer for life, and he's lacking the willingness to serve because it's really a business deal he's engaging in. So he's, high, he's lacking high moral standards and consequently receives advice from a, this lower order spirit and the advice is take her to a psychiatrist. So now we stop sharing and we will ask Carol to lead us towards love as the next step. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much, Sunshine. Love is truly the way. Yes. Thank you, Sunshine. Yes. So, dear friends, as Sunshine explained, uh, doing mediumship in exchange for financial gain is truly not the way to go. So we see next that Mentor Gubbio is practicing mediumship with Jesus because he offers to support lovingly Margarita's obsessor. He sees the Margarita's obsessor's heart is anguished. So he decides lovingly to support his family. He finds out that Margarita's obsessor's incarnate son is in jail. And he goes there and in prayer, he sees that the discarnate mother of, Saldan, of the obsessor's son and the discarnate wife are there in prison with him. So in prayer, Gubbio, the mentor, becomes the instrument of healing love, truly practicing mediumship with Jesus, opening his heart not on behalf of himself, but on behalf of his universal family. Andre Lewis describes that he, Mentor Gubbio, embraces the family of the obsessor in his arms with so much love that light emanates from his chest. And the spirits who are suffering in that prison cell awaken and finally find some respite to their suffering. And the person who was imprisoned finally regain his senses. So through love, through being an instrument of divine love, Mentor Gubbio gains the friendship of Margarita's obsessor. Margarita's obsessor was obsessing her because he was anguished in seeing his family suffer so much. So in helping his family, Mentor Gubbio practiced mediumship, love with Master Jesus, and as a result gained the obsessor's friendship. Andre Lewis describes that they actually embrace each other after this beautiful rescue work that we see illustrated here and call each other friends. So next we see Margarita again. And we see that although this one obsessor named Saldanha is now on the side of the good, there are other obsessors influencing her because Gregoria put a team of 60, 60 obsessors surrounding Margarita. So then Mentor Gubbio intuits Margarita's husband to visit a, a Christian spiritist center. 
So we see that even though the obsessors are there and there's a team of 60 of them, the good is prevailing and the good in the name of God is always present unconditionally in all of our lives. Margarita is illustrating God's unconditional love for us. Even when we suffer, God is right there through the presence of loving mentors that never fail to support us. So Margarita's husband follows Gubius, mentor Gubius intuition, and they visit a Christian spiritist meeting. And in this meeting, Andrea Lewis describes that there are 21 mentor spirits, while there are only nine incarnate spirits present. So we see that the ratio of loving spirits is much greater than that of incarnates, meaning that the discarnate loving mentors do most of the work in a Christian spiritist meeting and that it's an honor for us to partake of the banquet of light, light that they are a beautiful instrument of. So on the table in this beautiful picture, we see the medium, the counselor, Margarita, and her husband, Gabriel. And we see that as they enter into a state of prayer, Mentor Gubbio and the other mentors are finally able to remove the ovoid forms from Margarita's mind. And finally also, the medium that is there present in the Spiritist Center meeting is able to channel the most hardened obsessor that was part of the 60 spirit team from Gregorio. And finally, as he enters in contact with the medium, he is able to come into his senses, literally, and no longer be hypnotized. So not only Margarita receives some relief, but also the obsessor receives relief as well. And we see here that God loves us all indistinctively, that at the same time as the mentors extend a loving hand to Margarita, they extend the same loving hand to the suffering spirits, teaching us that God's love has no limits and for God, we are all precious and equal. So then, as a result of Margarita's liberation and the men and the obsessor's liberation as well, others join the team of the good. The other spirits from the 60 that Gregorio selected to obsess Margarita, many of of them decided to join the team of the good because the call of the good, dear friends, is irresistible. It's gentle, it's loving, it's caring, and thus transformative. The love that Mentor Gubbio emanated together with the other mentors was so great that they surrendered. And it was in this climate of renewal that Matilde, the highly evolved spirit that Sunshine told us about, Gregorio's mother, materializes again and says that she now trusts that she can meet directly with Gregorio because she notices that he is becoming tedious, feeling tedious of doing what he does, that she is starting to see cracks through which the light can come through. And she does not want to miss the precious opportunity because 
she perceives Gregorio as a precious gift. So she invites everyone to join her in this effort and she de devises a plan whereby they will meet again in the exit fields, the frontiers between the lower zones and the higher spheres, when Gregorio will come to, to meet them. Because Gregorio is now, dear friends, infuriated because the call of the good has rescued many of his workers. So he wants to call, Gregorio wants to call and mentor Gubbio for a duel. And as Gregorio comes in for this duel, mentor Matilde, his spiritual mother, will come to speak to him. So we see love in action so beautifully here. So we see there them going to the exit fields to meet Gregorio. Gregorio believes that he's going there for a duel, but Mentor Gubbio and Mentor Matilde are going there for his own very rescue. So we see that they are in a circle of prayer where Gubbio is serving as a mediumistic instrument for Matilde because as Sunshine explained, Matilde is such a highly evolved spirit that it's difficult for her to materialize even in the spiritual realms. So she's going to utilize Mentor Gubbio's vital fluid mediumistically to make herself more dense and thus more visible to Gregorio. And Andrea Lewis asks, what shall we do when Gregorio calls us for a duel? And Mentor Gubbio says, pray, forgive, understand. And then the, obs the former obsessors say, but shouldn't we be more forceful? And Mentor Gubbio then explains that love is never forceful. So we highly recommend that we all reread the book to see the beautiful dialogue of Mentor Gubbio with everyone there in the circle of prayer. And we see Gregorio approaching. And there Gregorio is, as Mentor Gubbio is in deep meditation, mediumistic trends. We see also Matilde showing herself immersed in immense light. Andrea Lewis tells us that she looks like a Madonna. She's so perfect and filled with light and love and Gregorio is carrying a sword and he says where is your sword why don't you fight why are you so cowardice and the mother says I have no weapons my weapon is my heart and I am here to love you and so, dear friends, Gregorio, in seeing that his mother had never abandoned him as he believed, and that he is still precious to her to this very day, and also that she has loved him unconditionally, the prince of the darkness surrenders to love. So this is a beautiful lesson for all of us to always have hope in the power of love because love is in all of us and love is the force that truly liberates and renews us. Mentor Gubbio says in this beautiful book that in this universe, the greater love always helps the lesser love. And there's nothing like 
the pure and holy love of a mother who truly embraces her child as a treasure from God. So Gregorio lets go of all of his defenses and after centuries of fighting the good, he turns into a childlike spirit and is carried by Gregorio in a starry night, celebratory night, to a spiritual colony where he can prepare to reincarnate. And Matilde is so loving that though she is a highly evolved spirit, she is determined to reincarnate as well, to welcome him again in her motherly arms. So from this we know that we all have so much, so many loving spirits who are like shining stars, rooting for us for centuries, loving us for centuries, and now waiting for us to liberate ourselves and fly high to find true joy and contentment in following our master. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you, Carol and Sunshine, for bringing this beautiful study to us. It's a teaser because if people want, there's so much detail into it, right? The teachings of Andrea Lewis. It's so thorough. And we want to remind everybody that when Chico Xavier psychographed this book, it was so, it was such a revolution in the spiritual realm that when he was walking back home, he was threatened by hundreds of low order spirits who wanted to beat him up because he was revealing to all of us the strategies through which these spirits imprison us. So here you have it. If you and I want to be truly protected, visualizing a light around us, it doesn't make the deal, okay? Because I know many people who practice spirituality say, oh, visualize this golden light. It's just the la la la. It's just the, you know, telling stories to kindergartners. It's not true. Simply doing that doesn't make the cut. It's much deeper than that. And, and here is a book explaining how we protect ourselves, plus how we avoid these deep obsessions. You can go to nursing homes today psychiatric hospitals, hospitals, and you see that many of the cases of diseases are not because of the physical body that is, um, that, that is really challenged. The open doors of the spiritual realm that we opened with our feelings, with our actions, that created these associations that we call obsessions, are really the need for us to study and be treated. So you can take medications, you can do whatever you like. Like I've heard so many stories of people who seem to be so healthy and out of the blue, boom, everything changed because we don't know on the behind the scenes of what people were really doing, right? Many people keep secrets, but it doesn't matter to others what the secrets are, but it matters to us. Right, Sunshine and Carol? Right. Absolutely right. Absolutely. Yes. And and Sunshine, when you read this book, and I know you've you and Carol worked so hard to bring this study chapter by chapter. If you could pick like one main thing that really struck you, what is it? Um that the dark forces are working very intelligently and we often are blind to them, both outside of us as well as inside of us. 
So to remember, you know, to be service oriented and to do the good is I think in studying, of course, is really the key, but to also let our light of discernment shine both outside and of course in here, right? Yeah, it's so right. Thank yeah. you, Sunshine. And what about you, Carrie? For me, it's the law of action and reaction, Vanessa, and the, the importance of taking responsibility for who we are and who we would like to be. Because often when we speak of quote unquote obsessors, we sometimes have a tendency to say, oh, we are not doing this. It's the quote unquote obsessor that is leading us in this particular direction. We must take measures against this external force. It's not us, it's them. And this book shows to us so beautifully that the true transformation, the true liberation occurs within that like Gregorio, we may have the illusion that we are under control and whatever goes quote unquote wrong is the fault of others. But we learn through this book that no, it isn't. It is our inner world that reflects itself outwards. And it's we who project this reality to the world around us. And thus, the good news is we have the key to open the door and liberate ourselves through love and service. And the other highlight, if I may take 30 seconds, Vanessa, please, is the importance of loving our quote unquote enemies because Mentor Gubbio could have gone straight to Margarita and saved, Mar rescued Margarita, his daughter, but no, he embraced the universal family. And that's how he achieved spiritual success. Yes, Carol. So friends, there are no victims. And we better align ourselves now that we're experiencing the transition of our planet. As you can see in the news, in all different areas of life, the truth is surfacing. And it's our choice to align ourselves to the truth, the truth of love. Or else, there's no other way. Our pathway, it's like a curriculum. The earth has a curriculum. And now we're going to exam time. If we don't abide to the curriculum and really apply ourselves, we're going to fail this. And if we fail, we may not even reincarnate on earth. You know, because if we're not aligned with the new consciousness that the earth is absorbing, it's beyond just... Oh, I'm going to pray. I'm going to do good actions. It's about the inner. And as Sunshine has also said, those who are still falling way behind, they're not dumb. They're intelligent too. Mm -hmm. They have very wise strategies. And if you read all the books by Andrea Lewis, including this one, Liberation, and if you go to the book, for example, Action and Reaction, you're going to see that this Darkness is very organized. Yes, very organized. And we need to be more organized in our own discipline to be truly protected. There's so much for us to meditate, right? And right. right? So Right now, before we go through the final moments of the passes and the prayer, we want to invite uh, Paloma, Luciana, and Daisy to join us in this final moment of discussion. Daisy, so when we go through the study of the book Liberation, there's so much. What would you like to highlight for us? Uh, thank you, Vanessa and Karen Sunshine, because it's 
this book is you you know you read but in you recap but now you know you see it again um i you know it's, there's so many highlights but to choose one i think the 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 scene at the end the encounter with the mother it's you know the power of love and in how love uh the love so pure that she is willing not only to source so many years work for her son to you know be renewed but now also to reincarnate back on earth as spirit of that statue to welcome him so it's it's truly i think a a, a beautiful showing about not only motherhood in general but this pure love and how we are all interconnected. So it's not only about me and myself and, and I, I'm gonna get there, but it's everyone, we're all interconnected. So if, you know, but we're not gonna progress until everyone progress. So uh, I think, you know, that's just one of the many, but that was that was so beautiful to see that scene at the end again. Thank you, Daisy. And now, since we know the preparation, the prevention of life is always the best. So if we work with our children, it may prevent a lot of headaches. And that's why today when we were here, Luciana and Paloma were at our other channel, at the Spirit Shot of Virginia and Kardec Radio's YouTube Teaching Children. One of the most important virtues that were promoted by Benjamin Franklin, right, Luciana and Paloma? Yes, it was really beautiful. We were working with temperance, which is moderation. And who doesn't need moderation? And we, we talked to the children, but we told them, children and adults, really, we all need it. And mm -hmm. making this connection with the talk today, um, working with these vibrations that are lower right we were working in how do you go from anger and sadness to transforming it into something else recognizing it and then working with it replacing it by positive thoughts so it was really beautiful right lou yes it was beautiful like paloma said it's a class for all of us yeah. to have this balancing life and complete with the study of liberation, right? When you put the balance of the good and the bad on us, like what I heard from the study today, how the bad is organized and how we have this side on us too, right? And even the children's, when they are born, we already can see how they are coming up, why the decisions that they make, when they decide to lie, when they decide to be angry, how we can actually come from the beginning and help them to make this decision and choose the right pathway. Thank you so much, Luciana and Paloma, for this. And uh, now we are going to invite everyone to join us in a final moment. I'm going to lead the spiritual passes and then our dear friend, Ney, who is here. Hello, Ney. How are you? Hello, everybody. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for being here with us, Nay, and, and Nay is going to lead us into the prayer. All right, so we invite everyone to join us now as we are going through the passes. I'll be leading the passes, and then I'll pass the word to Nay so he can do the final prayer. Let us breathe in and out deeply. and visualize spirit doctors, nurses, and therapists entering our homes. Visualize it. You don't need to be a medium. We trust in the power of the good and love. Let us see that our homes are open to the loving spirits who care about humanity, about us. And they come before us, illuminated hands, 
and we see the rays of healing light are showering towards us from head to toes. We breathe in these molecules of healing, breathe out the toxins of the mind and the bodies. We visualize that this rays of healing light is a warm envelopment, kindly displacing unhealthy molecules, particles from our minds and bodies. And new remedies permeate us, bringing renewal, vitality, health. And we visualize our homes being enveloped by this healing light. Rescuing entities that are suffering, kindly being transferred to the spiritual hospitals. And we feel so much gratitude to God that we raise ourselves in prayer, joining our friend, Lee, who is here with us to lead this prayerful moment. Keeping our vibration higher, let us connect our, our thought to Master Jesus. In thanking him for this, another meeting, for bringing those teachings to us and moving ourselves from the ignorance, leading us to learn about love. And with that learning how to improve ourselves and walk a little bit on our moral pathway. Also, let us pray for all those that are in the hospitals, that are in nursing homes, they're in prisons, and especially for those that are in need of prayers that are in ignorance or that are moving themselves away from the Jesus gospel. Let us send to them our love and our good vibrations and ask Jesus to send his workers to help them in the way that uh, everybody can be healed, can be guided, and can be taken care of. For Jesus, once again, we ask for your vibration, for your light over the United States, over the White House, bringing the harmony, bringing the good feelings to that place 
where it can be spread all over our, the citizens of this country. And Jesus, once again, we say thank you for all the blessings that you are, get, you are giving to us and for your workers that you are sending to our homes to treat us, to heal us, and to bring love to our, to each home of those that are watching this meeting and for their loved ones. And with your blessing and your permission, we close our meeting tonight and so be it. Thank you, Lee, for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> it's a joy. We miss our presential gatherings, but at least this is a way for us to feel closer. We, we want to thank everyone who joined us as well, and especially Sunshine, who came here as a, as a friend and uh, sharing this beautiful study. Uh, together with Carol, thank you, and uh, for everyone, thank you. Thank you. So, if anyone has a question, feel free to ask us at cardiacradio@gmail.com. There's always more. And friends, um, we know that the times are demanding greater caution. You know, today at NPR, there was a a study. Um, actually a report by nurses here that are working at ICUs, COVID-19 ICUs, and they are say, seeing the regrets of many people who didn't take the needed caution. They didn't use masks or avoided social gatherings, etc. And how now they are, they are very regretful. So we would say, do your best. Let's not tease the forces, because as you're seeing in the liberation book, you're smart. You're smart. So just be safe. Let us be safe in prayers and good actions and in the belief of the good. All right, friends, we wish you lots of blessings. Thank you, Paloma, Luciana, Daisy as well. And until next Friday, thank you, friends. <laughs> Bye -bye.